It's time to take a break from the present and journey down TurboView's memory lane with a little R and R. Hey everybody, this is Chris Bucci, and welcome back to another episode of Random Rerun, where we take a look back at a TurboGrafx game review or two, in this case, that we reviewed a long time ago, just in case you happen to miss it. Generally, these are probably some of the best games on the system and some of my favorites, and today is no exception for that. We have Newtopia and Newtopia 2. Newtopia was review number 16, and Newtopia 2 was review number 60, about three years later. But both of them are excellent, excellent games. On the last episode of Random Rerun, we talked about Dungeon Explorer and Dungeon Explorer 2, games that were clones of other games, aka Gauntlet. And now I'd like to introduce you to Notopia, which is widely regarded as a clone of The Legend of Zelda. Newtopia was developed and released by Hudson Soft in Japan in 1989 and hit American shores in 1990. It's a very fun action RPG. It's a long quest. It's very colorful. It has nice detail, pleasing graphics, peaceful music. The control is sharp. It's just really, really fun. And much like Dungeon Explorer, it had enough original stuff about it to make it stand on its own, even though it's widely regarded as a copy. But again, it's so well done. And my quote in the review, copying from the best isn't always a bad thing, I, I totally stand by. When I was a kid, that gold Legend of Zelda cartridge was so beautiful to me. I never saw anything like it. It felt like I was holding some kind of prized possession, you know? In fact, I still have my original Zelda cart. The older Zelda installments, up to the Super Nintendo especially, were just a favorite of mine. So Newtopia, keeping that same feeling and play pattern and idea really worked for me. Ironically, I didn't get Newtopia until 1994, literally four years after it was released. It just never really fell in my lap. And after I picked it up and gave it a real shot, I was upset that I never picked it up before. To me, it's one of the best early TurboGrafx-16 titles, which is why I gave it a four and a half out of five. Then we have the Hudson Soft follow-up, Newtopia 2, released in America in 1992. This time, Jezeta is lost in a labyrinth or something, and you play as whoever you choose the name to be. You find medallions, again, just like the first game, but you also have to track down a bunch of specific items to progress. It's pretty much the same as the first game with overworld visits and labyrinths to go through, you know? But it does have a few things like diagonal movement and a bit more animation and some cool graphical effects that is a step up from the original. If you were a Turbo Graphics guy back in the day, there was a place called Turbo Zone Direct. And I purchased a lot of games there, especially once I could no longer find games on the store shelves, which happened pretty quickly. <laughs> I remember seeing Newtopia 2 in their ads, but I never was interested in that game as a kid. I didn't know what it was, right? And then when I finally played Newtopia, I couldn't wait to get Newtopia 2, but by then it was gone <laughs> from Turbo Zone Direct. And I couldn't really find it anywhere, and then I was pretty much done collecting for the time. So I did not get my Newtopia 2 until the early 2000s when I tried to complete my collection. But once I picked it up and played it, I have to agree, it's so much like the original, it's almost a clone <laughs> of a clone which is what I said in the review, and I stand by that. It's an excellent game, 
and totally worth your time. As far as the two Turbo Views episodes themselves, there is a little more energy between reviews. You could feel some of my comfort level coming out by the time we get to the second Newtopia, which is good. Since Turbo Views is a straight review show, it's difficult to come up with unique ways to present the episodes. For Newtopia 2's review, I tried a speed through slash walk through idea. So that's where I came up with the idea for the speed through at the end. Uh, and the Micro Machines sold separately was actually based upon the Micro Machines commercials that John Machida Jr. used to voice. I actually met him at a TFCon convention one time, and, and man, he was awesome. Um, and so I was kind of trying to emulate that the best that I could. Save the old Labyrinth Adventurer guy to get the Rainbow Drop, visit the Cobbler to get the Snow Boots, get the Aqualung from the fourth Labyrinth, use the Aqualung to pass the underwater levels, defeat the crack. I was pretty proud. I did the entire thing in two separate sections. Uh, I didn't speed it up. I didn't alter it at all. That's actually me doing it in two separate takes. I just had a cut in the middle because, you know, I flubbed in the center. But, hey, that's not too bad for an amateur, right? <sighs> Micro Machines sold separately. Anyway, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this little commentary on Newtopia 1 and 2. Following this, I'm going to play the two reviews in their entirety. If this interests you, definitely check it out because I think you'll really enjoy these games. These Zelda clones are extremely well done. They stand on their own and they're totally recommended by myself. All right, everybody, this is Chris Bucci and I will talk to you next time on Random Rerun. The Turbo Graphics had its share of clone-like games, and Newtopia made Legend of Zelda fans wet their pants in excitement. With its overhead view, action-adventure RPG, and similar elements, Newtopia proves that Zelda was not too far from the designers' minds. The nice part is that it's a long, engaging quest, making for one excellent overhead adventure. Before everything begins, you will be asked to choose file cabinet or password. If you have the ability to save the game using the Duo or CD's internal memory, or Turbo Booster Plus, you can use the file cabinet, saving the game automatically within the memory banks. Otherwise, a password feature is available, so you can also save the manual way. After that, we see a quick cutscene of the evil demon Dearth appearing and kidnapping Princess Aurora. Then, we meet an old, and wise, as she likes to call herself, Mother, who explains that Dearth has also taken the land of Newtopia's eight precious medallions. And, thank goodness Jezeta has arrived to help them. A nice guy he definitely is, as he volunteers to recover the medallions spread across eight different labyrinths and rescue the princess in the process. If you look closely at this first screen, it is essentially the main hub. In fact, you can see the holes where each of the medallions eventually fit. You will be revisiting this area often, so get used to it. And the quest begins. As in Zelda, you are in overhead view and start out with a sword and a few extra goodies. But as you can tell in your status screen, there ain't much available at the start. After a while, this screen will fill up with essential items, including ones you can select throughout the quest to help, and ones that are automatically assigned. You also have a compass to guide the way, and a map, which will fill in as you arrive in each labyrinth. Taking a closer look at the main screen, you have the current power-up item in use, which was selected in the status screen, the current sword in use, how much gold you've obtained along the way, how much life your energy bar has left, and the number of bombs you have available. Newtopia takes you through five different areas in eight different labyrinths. As you would expect, you meet townspeople along the way in order to gain clues to your next step in typical RPG text-based fashion. Some of these folks will even provide or sell you items including vitality, bombs, or speed enhancing shoes. You also must obtain specific items to continue into certain areas, such as the ladder for walking across water, 
or moonbeam moss to light your way in certain labyrinths. Or the crypt key that must be found in each underground area in order to open the door to each end boss. Once Jezeta obtains the wand, it becomes a very necessary weapon. The power of the wand changes based on how much health remains, going from strong to weak. This can greatly affect your aim and fighting ability. In fact, I tend to like the flame's mid-range best, since it turns into a ball which can be released quicker than the constant barrage of flames at full power. A few unique goodies are also packed into the game that help Jezeta with his quest. The crystal ball in each labyrinth opens up the map in your status screen for a better view. The compass points the way to each labyrinth, but once inside, it points the way to medallions or bosses and sounds an alarm when Jezeta comes close. Speaking of items, there are a ton to find and collect along the way. Sword upgrades, armor and shields, bombs, wings of return, coins, wow! Most of these are found in the usual treasure chests, scattered about or left behind by certain destroyed enemies. You gotta love them. At the end of each labyrinth, defeating a boss finally gets you one of the medallions and you're sent back to the main hub where your energy is replenished and your character is leveled up. After collecting two medallions, a passage opens to another world. And after collecting all eight, you chase Dearth to the north and rescue the princess, who rewards you with, uh, <clears throat> The graphics are nice and colorful with some nice detailing and unique boss designs. Obviously, we're in overhead view, so there is only so much that can be done from a graphical standpoint. They could have added a little bit more dimension, perhaps. And the labyrinths themselves are a tad plain with very little variety from one to another but the graphics are always pleasing enough for this adventure. The sound is also pretty good with some peaceful like tunes and average sound effects. As with the graphics, the labyrinths seem to be devoid of much variety in the music department. It seems to be the same throughout. The control is pretty great. Switching between items is easy via your status screen. This enemy seemed too tough? No problem! Let's quickly select the ring and poof! He's transformed into a pansy. Ha! There are times I wish he could move diagonally, but luckily, you can shoot flames in that direction, which is a nice addition. There are many puzzles to solve. Always check everything, because you never know what rock can be moved to reveal a secret passage, or what wall can be destroyed with a single bomb. Wow, does that scream Zelda? Yeah, definitely. There are also some fun and unique items to collect, and characters to visit. In fact, Newtopia always seemed well-balanced difficulty-wise, and I enjoyed coming back to it time and time again. Eat your heart out, Link. Jezeta is here. And Nintendo's gonna sue somebody. Newtopia is extremely fun if you enjoy the overhead action-adventure Zelda games, and comes really close to the original Link adventure. But copying from the best isn't always a bad thing, and Nootopia proves this fact. It's a really fun 7-8 to eight hour romp that'll keep you coming back for more time and again. I really enjoy this game, and to me, it's one of the best early TurboGrafx titles. 4.5 Turbo Chips out of 5. Almost three years ago, I reviewed an awesome Zelda-like clone called Newtopia. Well, there was a sequel released late in the Turbo's life, and it also was great if you enjoyed the first. In fact, Newtopia 2 is so much like the original, it's almost a clone of a clone. Newtopia, a place of harmony, but not for long. Dearth, the Emperor of Darkness, is secretly rising once again and has sniffed out the evil concealed beneath this peaceful land. Jezeta, the hero from the first game, has gone missing in a labyrinth. <laughs> Stupid. 
So it is up to you to find him and save the Newtopians from living in constant fear. And by you, I mean you. At the beginning of this one, you enter a name for the main character. If you choose your own, well, you will be the hero and be used in text throughout the game. I knew I was destined for greater things. Oh yeah. Just like before, Newtopia 2 is an overhead action RPG, mainly split into two areas, the overworld and the underworld, or labyrinths. In the overworld areas, you walk around, talk to people, buy stuff, defeat some enemies, and eventually locate the various labyrinths. The game lays out the majority of the story in these areas and is overall more diverse this time around. Instead of just finding medallions, which you also will have to do, you need to locate various items in order to proceed through the game. Most of these, however, are located underground. Talking to villagers is even more important than before because they will often reveal what you need to do next. <laughs> That's funny. The overworld also has some other goodies, including secret passages by pushing rocks or burning away trees. You will meet special monks who increase your life force and the ability to hold more bombs. Since bombing is very necessary, the more the better. You will also find awesome chicks who replenish your energy or give you a password. Just hope you have internal memory to save the game because this password is crazy. Now for the underworlds, the labyrinths. Once here, you need to find a crystal ball in order to reveal the map. Then you locate various armor and other items. And finally, you need to snag the key in order to, oh, Sneaky, sneaky. You have to snag the key in order to enter the boss crypt, the evil who guards your exit. In order to be allowed passage into adjoining rooms, you often have to defeat all enemies on screen, push a specific block, or blow open a wall. These labyrinths require some major searching and a lot of items are pretty well hidden. Now, some things you can skip, in this playthrough, I did not even get the Wind Staff, even though Dearth steals it from me in the end. Hmm. But since you are required to have all gold materials and a Sun Sword to fight him, you have to search whether you like it or not. Your character control is improved in this version, as you can walk diagonally instead of just being restricted to the four-way direction of Jezeta. This was something about the original I didn't care for, as only the weapon could be shot out that way. Now, it is tough to swipe at an enemy at first because the directional pad will want to push him in the wrong direction, but you will get used to it quickly and it is a welcome addition. You move very slow at the beginning, but after the third labyrinth, you will find snow boots that keep you from slipping and increase your speed. And may I say, thank God. Your character can attack short range with his sword, but also long range by using items and finding the fire, wind, and lightning staffs. After defeating enemies, sometimes they will leave behind coins, bombs, hearts, wings of return, which take you back to the last save point, and many other items. Some of these can also be purchased by your character or found in chests. Most of them are stored in the good old sub-menu, or inventory screen, accessed by pressing run. Items you can select, items you hold, compass, key, and the crystal, which will then reveal the labyrinth map. The graphics and animations are a little upgraded this time. Just as before, it retains a colorful and consistently nice appearance. I love some of the new touches, like really cool underwater effects. The labyrinths look good, although they have very little variation from one to another. Overall, Newtopia 2 has a really great look. The music and sound is good, but honestly, a bit too much of the same from the first game. It's peaceful 
and nice, and it flows along with the action well, but it doesn't really change things up very much, and will sound similar throughout the quest. Now I already mentioned the controls, and they are pretty responsive. The multi-direction is great, and attacking is rather a breeze. Switching between menus and items is really quick. You know what? No complaints here. Newtopia 2 is a lot of fun to play, has a decent length, and is a really engaging quest. But it's not without its flaws. The labyrinth levels are extremely expansive, and that is great, but some of them are way too expansive. The sixth one is a logistical nightmare, with a handful of levels and even bridges leading to other sides. In this stage, you have to find the Golden Shield, which is located in an area not shown on the map. You'll be using all of your medicine, all of your bombs, and then the Wings of Return to head back, recharge, and try it again many times. That chained up old guy has some great information, but he repeats it every time you re-enter his prison and you cannot skip it. Ugh. One of my major complaints this time is the use of the Fire Staff, my favorite weapon from the original. It works exactly the same, but this time, it pushes enemies into you. Ah! You have to be behind a pillar or extremely far away if you choose to use this weapon. This is a pretty big flaw in my opinion, and as a result, the flame does not come in handy as much as it did before. Ah! Come on! Aside from those few things, the game does have a lot of new positives to balance it all out. I love Newtopia 2. It gives you hours of enjoyment, and both games in the series are true TurboGrafx gems. I have had some people ask me if I could do a walkthrough of the games I review, so since it is the holiday season, this one is for you guys. Get a pencil. Get the Chalice of Agony from the first boss, use it on the lava to make it solid and cross to the pool. Go to Uria's Shrine, get the Manipula Herb from the second labyrinth, give the herb to the princess to cure her and she takes you to the Oracle. Pour the Chalice of Agony on her and she opens the staircase to the next area. Find the Moonbeam Moss. Save the old Labyrinth Adventurer Guide to get the Rainbow Drop, visit the Cobbler to get the Snow Boots, get the Aqualung from the fourth labyrinth, use the Aqualung to pass the underwater levels. Defeat the Kraken, talk to Jezeta, get the Sword of Legends, find out Princess was kidnapped, go all the way back to Uria's Shrine, use the Sword of Legends on the altar to reveal the passage. Meet the Weapons Maker who will upgrade your sword if you bring him the Sun Flame. Find the hidden old guy for light Lightning Staff, save the girl for the Flute of Murdoch, get the Bell of Heaven, ring the bell to find the Sun Flame, use Flute to awaken the Ice Giant and get the Yellow Medallion, the Weapon Guy now upgrades you to the Sun Sword, visit the Scientist to gain entry to the Volcano Mouth, defeat the Salamander for the Red Medallion, kill the Blue Blob to get the Blue Medallion, reveal and enter statues, save Princess to get the Green Medallion, and finally place the Medallions to reveal Dirth's Lair. <sighs> Micro Machines sold separately. Utopia 2 has a lot of great new positives, a couple of new negatives, and much of the same. As a result, I enjoyed the sequel as much as the first, even though this one does feel a tad more polished than its predecessor. If you like Zelda clones, trust me, loyal followers, you'll enjoy Utopia 2 and we'll be back for more.